While we may think of ourselves as advanced after catching a glimpse of the eight planets of our solar system and their 200 moons, we really have little idea of what's out there. So much so that there's speculation that there might be one more planet in our solar system. Scientists call it Planet X or Planet 9. This undiscovered world could be hidden way out past Neptune. Asteroids and dwarf planets in this area have weirdly unexplained altered orbits, and Planet X may be the reason. Tales of this mysterious planet began over a hundred years ago with a man called Percival Lowell. Lowell had a great love of space, and aside from having an impressive mustache, he was also super rich. Ooh, that lucky guy! He used his riches to build an observatory in Arizona. He then dedicated it to study the odd motions of Uranus and Neptune. Their gravitational pulls are slower than those of all the other planets in our solar system, almost as if there is a giant hidden object pulling them off course. In 1906, Lowell theorized that there could be another planet out beyond Neptune. It probably caused those strange cosmic happenings. The man called this potential space body Planet X. In 1930, Pluto was discovered by Clyde Tombaugh at Lowell's very own observatory. It finally looked like people had an explanation for the weird orbital patterns. Lowell's team was on cloud 9 after the discovery, but their celebrations were short-lived. Soon, they found out that Pluto is way too small to be having that much of an effect on the surrounding planets. And it was also too far away from them. So it was back to the drawing board. Planet X, if it exists, is 10 times the size of Earth and 4 times its radius. It would take at least 10,000 years for the planet to orbit the Sun. And it would sit over 200 times further out than our home planet. That's 600 astronomical units from the center of the solar system. FYI, an astronomical unit equals the distance between the Earth and the Sun. But while that sounds super far away, it's actually not. The distance between space bodies is usually measured in light years, and an astronomical unit is a much smaller unit of measurement. For context, the most distant thing detected from Earth is the galaxy GNZ11. Cute name, huh? It sits a staggering 32 billion light years away. Even so, our telescopes can still spot it. And just one light year is the same as 63,241 astronomical units. Woo! So, if our tech can detect a galaxy that's so far away, how have we not been able to uncover Planet X? Well, it's probably down to the fact that it might not even exist. The theory of Planet X was pretty much debunked back in 1989. It was discovered that the mysterious gravitational pulls of Neptune had been a red herring all along. Scientists had massively misjudged just how big Neptune actually was. Voyager 2 visited the planet and discovered its actual size. This new info explained the odd gravitational pulls, meaning they weren't being caused by the so-called Planet X. But that's not where our investigation ends, as the hypothetical ninth planet once again popped up around 10 years ago. While the evidence behind Lowell's theory was wrong, his belief in Planet X may not have been. In 2015, astronomers Michael Brown and Konstantin Batigin discovered that there were, in fact, unexplained gravitational forces at play past Neptune. There are satellites that orbit planets perpendicularly, which doesn't happen anywhere else in our solar system. There's also clusters of asteroids that move in very specific ways, so specific that it's basically impossible that it could be random. Even weirder, there are satellites that travel in completely opposite direction to the Sun, unlike most other things in the solar system. A planetoid called Sedna also appears to be being pulled towards something, along with six others, all going in the same direction. And Brown and Batigin aren't just any other stargazers. They're both well-respected scientists at the top of their game. Konstantin Batigin has been named in Forbes as one of 30 scientists who are changing the world. And Mike Brown was the man who rebranded Pluto as a dwarf planet. This means that when these guys say something, it's usually pretty legit, and you should probably listen. But the only way we can really prove Planet X exists is to actually find it. 
and this has turned out to be pretty difficult. To locate the planet, we'd need to use a method called transit photometry. This is basically where we monitor a whole bunch of stars for a long time and look out for any dips in the light they give off. These dips would likely be caused by a planet getting in the way. And ta-da! The existence of Planet X could be proved. But for this method to work, Earth, the new planet, and the Sun all have to be perfectly aligned. These circumstances are pretty rare. And if these conditions don't exist, the dip in light won't happen. Plus, this method would only really work with planets that are closer to the Sun than our Earth. That's Venus and Mercury. For anything past Earth, this technique is pretty much useless. Another technique we could use is to find the potential planet through a good old-fashioned telescope. But as you can imagine, that's insanely tricky. The furthest object that we've found in our solar system is a planetoid, appropriately named, far, far out. But that's only 140 AU away from the Sun. That's only like a quarter of the way to Planet X. We can only see an object because of its brightness. The Sun is very visible to us because it emits huge amounts of light. And we can see the Moon because it reflects the Sun's light. Technically, the Moon has no right to appear brighter than everything else in the night sky. It only seems brighter because we're closer to it. The farther away an object is, the less bright it appears to us. The major issue with seeing the theoretical Planet X is that all objects in our solar system get their light from the Sun. They reflect sunlight, and that's why we can see them. Given how far away from the Sun Planet X might be, it makes it nearly impossible to see. And because of its really dim light, to view it, we would require perfect weather conditions as well as an extremely strong telescope. But Brown and Badigeon have found the perfect one. The Subaru Telescope is located at the top of a dormant volcano in Hawaii. It's huge and is capable of capturing even the weakest light from distant space objects. The issue that we need to figure out is where to point it. Without knowing where Planet X actually is, this basically turns things into a giant guessing game. There are also only around three nights every year when the conditions are clear enough to see the hypothetical Planet X. It's difficult, but not impossible. And still, most astronomers have called it a day and agreed that Planet X doesn't exist, stating that it's just a common myth. The most widespread explanation for the weird gravitational pulls is that there's a tiny black hole in our solar system. It's pulling the planets toward us. But don't worry. They say it's not big enough to actually munch on a planet. So Earth is all good, for now. The issue with the black hole theory is that, once again, it's almost impossible for us to track the thing down. While its mass could be as great as that of Planet X, the hole itself would be squished down to the size of an orange. Telescopes wouldn't be of any use. To find it, people would have to look for the gamma rays sent off by objects as they fall into the black hole. Another way we could find it is to release hundreds of tiny spacecraft. They would pass close enough to the hypothetical hole, and when they got pulled toward it, we could probably detect it. But don't count out Brown and Badigeon's theory. It's still being documented by NASA. And until we find unmistakable evidence to prove any theories, Planet X might still be out there. Okay, here you are, in the middle of the ocean. It's endless, but you can't see it, because there's a thick fog all around you. Dense clouds hide the huge but dim sun. Is it day or night? You don't know. There's only a gray haze around you. You're alone. Even if you try to swim down, after several hours, you still won't be able to see the bottom of the ocean. And that's a typical water planet for you. I know, sounded kind of dark, but it's not that bad. These water worlds are more interesting than they may seem, so let's take a look at them. The ocean planet is a planet that consists, as you might have guessed, mainly of water, ice, and maybe some rocks. Think of the Earth's oceans. It's horrifying depths, the Mariana Trench, and all that. And now, can you guess how much space all the water on Earth takes up? 0.025%, exactly. 
Now, just try to imagine a world of 40 to 60% water. If you dive in there, the depth can exceed 60 miles. Compared to that, the 6 mile depth of our Mariana Trench sounds like nothing. And yeah, the pressure there will be enormous. It can reach up to 20,000 Earth atmospheres. Very crushing. Now, it may sound scary, but it still would be great to find out more about these planets. Fortunately, according to scientists' calculations, there may be a lot of such planets in our galaxy alone. Well, you don't have to go far. You can find these water guys even in our solar system. Not planets, of course, but moons. Jupiter has Ganymede and Callisto, and Saturn has Titan and Enceladus. The ocean can reach up to 30% of the mass of these moons. Although it isn't clear whether these oceans are covered with a thick crust of ice. But we've discovered quite a few full-fledged ocean planets. This is because the conditions in which these planets may exist are very specific. For example, this planet should be somewhere 6 to 8 times larger than the Earth. If it's smaller, it'll have a rocky surface. But if it's bigger, it'll turn into a gas giant. At the same time, it must be in the habitable zone of its star. A little further, and the planet immediately turns into an icy giant or a cold super-Earth. So yeah, these guys are very picky. We first started exploring these planets back in the 1970s. However, since then, we found only a couple of them. But they're still very interesting. The first planet is Galice 1214b. It was the very first ocean planet that we discovered. Initially, the scientists noticed only a small dim dot. This dot turned out to be the red dwarf star Galice 1214, an unremarkable, completely ordinary star that's five times smaller than our Sun and 300 times dimmer. Scientists wouldn't worry about it at all, but back in 2009, they noticed that this star had one single planet. And this planet turned out to be quite strange. This super-Earth was 2.5 times bigger than our Earth and 6.5 times heavier. But at the same time, it had a very, very small density and about the same gravity as our planet. In other words, there were almost no rocks and metals on it. But it wasn't a gas giant either. So there was only one option left. It was covered in water and ice. And that's how we discovered the first ocean planet. Well, actually, we can only assume that it consists of water. That's what the mathematical calculations say. In reality, this planet is quite confusing. It's difficult to explore, and so far, scientists haven't been able to find anything there. No hydrogen, no helium, no water, nada. That's because the outer layer of the atmosphere of this planet is very dense, and it perfectly hides its composition. But even so, it's probably a water world. Galice 1214b is very close to its star. It's only 0.014 astronomical units away, which is less than the distance between the Moon and us. The year there lasts about 36 hours, and the temperatures, to put it mildly, are just wild. Scientists suggest that the average temperature there can reach 250 to 535 degrees Fahrenheit. Woo, that's hot! Remember the creepy description from the beginning? Well, actually, spending time on Gleesey 1214b would be a little different. More like swimming in a steam boiler. Because of such gigantic temperatures, the ocean on the surface will be constantly in a state close to boiling without actually reaching it. So, imagine that you're descending to the surface of this planet, flying through clouds of steam. And then, you suddenly find yourself in the water. What? But when did it happen? Well, that's because the boundary between steam and water on Gleesey 1214b will be very blurred. Of course, you won't be able to swim to the bottom of this ocean. But most likely, this bottom is covered with a very thick layer of so-called hot ice. It's like regular ice, but it doesn't really care about the laws of physics, so it just doesn't melt even at gigantic temperatures. And the thickness of this ice can reach as much as 3,000 miles. So that's it for the creepy Gleesey 1214b. And not an Airbnb in sight. Now, although we can't 100% guarantee that it's a water world, we still have another candidate for this position. A newly discovered planet called TOI 1452b. This planet, located in the Dragon constellation, is almost 100 light years away from us. It was discovered using the TESS telescope by a group of researchers from the University of Montreal. 
This planet also belongs to the class of super-Earths. It's seven times larger than our planet, but 48 times heavier. Again, all this is at a very low density. Because of this, scientists have suggested that almost the entire planet consists of a giant ocean. Here, we were a little luckier. This world won't be just a giant puddle and some thick ice. On this planet, there's probably a rocky surface deep under the water, just like in a typical ocean. Don't get too excited, though. This ocean will certainly be very different from what we're used to. TOI 1452b also orbits a small red dwarf. And not even one, but two at once. At the same time, if the previous planet was close to its sun, then this one, on the contrary, is very, very far away. It's two and a half times farther from its stars than Pluto is from the sun. And it moves at great speed. A year there lasts only 11 days. But we still don't know many things about this planet. We'll probably get some new information when scientists observe it from the James Webb Telescope. Well, that's it. Wait, did you expect something else? All right, all right, I know the question that bothers you the most. Can there be life? Well, this is a difficult question. We all know that water means life, and besides, these planets are in the habitable zones of their stars. So, potentially, yes, there might be life. Not some full-fledged civilizations, of course, but bacteria, fish, and some creepy giant monsters. I mean, you know, why not? However, this is very unlikely. Water alone isn't enough to create life, even though it's very important. There should also be some microelements and some minerals. And unfortunately, for most water planets, the composition will only consist of water and very thick ice. There won't be any minerals there. But don't give up there's still some probability. First of all, there are meteorites and comets. They can bring the necessary minerals to the planet. The more often they crash into it, the higher the probability that they'll bring something like this into the ocean and thus create life. Secondly, TOI 1452b actually has these minerals. Yes, we don't know how deep the rocky bottom is located there. But if it exists, then surely something could have originated there. Let's hope that new research with powerful telescopes will allow us to find out the truth. And who knows? Maybe one day we'll be able to visit such a planet ourselves. An exoplanet is any planet inside our solar system. Some of them are free-floating. Those are called rogue planets. They move around the galactic center. Others orbit their host star, or two. For the first time, astronomers discovered exoplanets in the 1990s. Since then, scientists have found thousands of them. And now, you can sneak a peek too. Spoiler alert, some exoplanets are pretty bizarre. Others resemble our home planet and could probably support life. The closest to Earth exoplanet is Proxima Centauri b. It's a mere 4.2 light years away from Earth. Recently, astronomers have found out that this world might resemble Earth even more than previously thought. It's only 17% more massive than our home planet. It orbits a star that is dimmer and less massive than the Sun. Proxima Centauri b is in the middle of the star's habitable zone. This means that chances are liquid water and life might exist on the planet. It looks like the exoplanet is tidally locked with its parent star. This means one of its sides faces the star at all times, and the other is always in the darkness. Scientists haven't figured out yet whether the planet has an atmosphere. It's traveling too close to its star and completes one orbit within 11 Earth days. The radiation from the star might be pulling the planet's air away. If this is the case, Proxima Centauri b isn't likely to have liquid water on its surface. Gleiss 832c is 16 light years away from Earth. In the cosmic scheme of things, it's a stone's throw away. This exoplanet is five times as massive as Earth and travels much closer to its parent star. That's why a year on this planet lasts a mere 36 days. But since this star is a red dwarf, much cooler and dimmer than the Sun, Gleiss 832c gets as much light and heat as our planet does. At the same time, it's still unclear if Gliese 832c is similar to Earth. It probably has a much thicker atmosphere that creates a runaway greenhouse effect. This phenomenon occurs when a planet absorbs more heat from its host star than it can release back into space. 
This means that Gliese 832c is more likely to resemble scorching hot Venus rather than relatively cool Earth. Another Earth-like planet, TOI 700d, is 100 light-years away from us in the constellation Dorado. It orbits a small and rather cool dwarf star that is about 40% of the mass and size of the Sun. Its surface temperature is half as high as that of our star. The outermost planet, which is the very TOI 700d, is almost the size of Earth. It also sits in the habitable zone of its parent star. No flares from TOI 700 reach the planet. This increases the chances of the exoplanet being habitable. This means it can potentially develop and maintain life. Scientists don't know for sure the exact conditions on the surface of the planet, but one of the computer simulations they've created shows a planet covered with an ocean. It has a very dense atmosphere dominated by carbon dioxide. Astronomers think a similar atmosphere surrounded Mars when it was a young planet, but another 3D model shows TOI 700d as an all-land, cloudless world. That's what our Earth would probably look like if it wasn't covered with oceans. Winds on TOI 700d move away from the night side of the planet and meet in the area that directly faces the star. There is an exoplanet that stands out among the rest because of its awesome magenta color. You can find this world in the Virgo constellation. The planet is called Gliese 504b. The distance between this planet and its parent star is nine times the distance between the Sun and Jupiter. The planet formed relatively recently and is still glowing with heat. That's why its surface looks pinkish. Just 20 light years away from the Sun, which isn't such a great distance when we talk about space, a bizarre rogue planet is roaming our home Milky Way galaxy. But even though this planet doesn't orbit any star, it still has an incredibly powerful magnetic field. It's 4 million times stronger than Earth's magnetic field. The exoplanet also produces amazing auroras. When it was discovered in 2016, astronomers were almost sure they had detected a brown dwarf which is an object too large to be a planet and too small to be a star. But later, scientists received proof that the space object wasn't big enough to be a brown dwarf. The planet sure is a mammoth among its peers. It's 1.2 times as wide as the largest planet of the solar system, Jupiter, and more than 12 times as heavy. Astronomers think the exceptional strong magnetic field helps the planet produce the auroras, but the most curious thing is that they're generated in a different way than auroras on Earth. It might be because the exoplanet's moon helps the planet create these light shows. If you traveled 20,000 light years away from Earth, you'd come close to a red dwarf in the Sagittarius constellation. Such stars are very cool and small. Quite far away from this cold star, there's a planet. The distance between this world and its host star is so great that the planet receives very little heat. It's one of the coldest planets ever detected. The average surface temperature on the planet is lower than negative 360 degrees Fahrenheit. That's why the entire planet is covered with a thick layer of ice. If you stepped onto its surface, you'd see nothing but glaciers, plains, and mountains of ice. And still, astronomers claim life might exist deep beneath the frozen surface. All because the core of the planet is likely to generate enough heat to melt some of its inner ice. In this case, there would be an enormous subsurface ocean, maybe even swarming with bizarre life forms on the planet. One of the oldest exoplanets we know about is PCR B162026b. It's about 12.7 billion years old. It's almost three times as old as Earth, which appeared 4.5 billion years ago. This also means that the Genesis planet formed only about 1 billion years after the Big Bang. The planet is so old that its two parent stars have had enough time to evolve into a white dwarf and a pulsar, making almost 100 revolutions per second. Sunrises on this planet must look awesome! I bet the next exoplanet isn't like any other you might have seen before. It's often called Super Saturn, or Saturn on steroids. 
That's because J1407b has a colossal system of rings. They're 640 times as large as those of Saturn. The bizarre world is 434 light years away from Earth. It's the only planet we know about that has rings similar to Saturn's. If you moved J1407b to our solar system and replaced Saturn with it, its rings would look many times larger than a full moon. Astronomers have noticed a gap halfway through the planet's rings. The chances are high that an exomoon the size of Mars orbits the planet somewhere within this gap. If you lived on this moon, you'd have an awesome view every time you looked up into the sky. This exoplanet, called WASP-12b, munches on the light coming from its star. It's one of the darkest worlds people know about. All because its day side consumes light rather than reflects it back into space. The planet is giant, twice the size of Jupiter, and it traps more than 94% of the light that reaches its atmosphere. This is likely to be the main reason for the insane temperatures on the surface of the planet. They can rise up to 4,600 degrees Fahrenheit. It's almost half as hot as the surface of the Sun. WASP-12b travels so close to its host star that it needs just one day to complete one orbit. Its night side isn't as hot as the day side, a mere 2,200 degrees Fahrenheit. Because of this difference in temperature, water vapor and clouds gather above the surface of the planet. From time to time, swirls of material from the planet's superheated atmosphere spill onto its star. About 4,000 light-years away from Earth, there's an exoplanet that might be one enormous diamond. It's five times the size of our planet, but needs only two hours and ten minutes to orbit its parent star. It's a pulsar rotating at a rate of 10,000 times a minute. The planet is denser than any other we've discovered so far. It consists mostly of carbon, which is so dense that astronomers think it might be crystalline. If it was true, it could mean that at least some part of the planet is diamond. On WASP-76b, it rains iron on the night side of the planet, and the temperature on the daytime side rises up to 4,300 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot enough to vaporize most metals. This exoplanet is a bit smaller than Jupiter and located 640 light-years away from Earth. Such terrifying weather conditions in this world are caused by its unusual orbit. The distance between WASP-76b and its parent star is 10 times shorter than the distance between Mercury and the Sun. That's why the star and the huge planet are tidally locked. One side of WASP-76b always faces the star, and the other side is always pitch black. This bright blue exoplanet sits 62 years away from Earth. A bit larger than Jupiter, it looks calm and peaceful. Its blue color might remind you of our home planet. But this familiar appearance conceals the planet's horrifying nature. The beautiful hue comes from silicate atoms and particles that make up the atmosphere. But the wind speed on the planet can reach 5,400 miles per hour. That's seven times the speed of sound. The temperature there can rise up to 1,600 degrees Fahrenheit. But this isn't the worst. In this bizarre world, it rains glass, sideways. So it's probably not the place where you'd like to spend your vacation. So you're driving down the highway, and an 18-wheel tractor trailer is coming up fast behind. You've got to change lanes. You look in the mirror. Is there enough space? And you notice the word on the mirror. Objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. No kidding! Well, it's the same with the Milky Way galaxy. There's another galaxy headed this way, and like the tractor-trailer, it's closer than it looks. The Andromeda Galaxy, or M31, as it was labeled originally by Charles Messier in his catalog of 110 fuzzy objects in 1774, is now officially named NGC-122. That's New Galactic Catalog 122. A spiral galaxy larger than the Milky Way, the Andromeda Galaxy is so big and so close that you can see it without a telescope. In fact, it appears with the unaided eye half as wide as the Moon. It's estimated that the Andromeda Galaxy contains 1 trillion stars, compared with the Milky Way's estimated 300 to 400 billion measly stars. 
To see the Andromeda galaxy, you must allow your eyes to become dark adapted. This might take about 10 minutes while your pupils dilate to take in as much light as possible. M31 is best seen from late summer through winter, when the great square of Pegasus the winged horse is overhead. Draw a line across the great square diagonally upwards from the lower corner star, then go a little further beyond the square. There it is! But you still won't be able to see how big it is, unless you peek at it from the corners of your eyes. If you stare straight at it, the galaxy will tend to fade away. You must use your peripheral vision to see how big the Andromeda galaxy appears. Peripheral vision, or averted vision, allows you to see light more sensitively at night, but without color. Sailors have used averted vision for centuries to see faint lights out on the ocean or on land. Aristotle used averted vision to observe star cluster M41 in Canis Major, as he described in his book Meteorologica. In a telescopic photograph, the Andromeda galaxy appears six times wider than the Moon, because with the unaided eye, we can only see the bright center of the galaxy. A telescopic photograph shows how massive M31's spiral arms really are. And this beast of a galaxy is headed our way. We are looking at a future massive collision of galaxies of, well, galactic proportions. When that happens, humanity may need to relocate to another galaxy to inhabit. Perhaps we'll go to the pinwheel galaxy in the asterism of the Big Dipper. How do we know the Andromeda galaxy is moving towards us? With a tool called a spectroscope. After the camera, the spectroscope is the most important attachment to a telescope. Oh, except for the human eye. Our eyes only see light. You don't have this big horse in your eye. You only have the light being reflected by the horse in your eyes. The same with space. We only see the light coming from there. So, if we are going to understand space, we need to understand light. And that was not an easy task for astronomers of the 19th century. The invention of the spectroscope was a big breakthrough in understanding light coming to Earth from space. With a spectroscope, astronomers can tell which direction objects in space are moving, as well as which elements are making the light. When you hear an ambulance approaching, you hear the siren getting louder and higher. And when it passes you and goes away, you hear the siren's sound get weaker and lower. The change in pitch frequency depends entirely on the motion of the source. This is called the Doppler effect, after the Austrian physicist and mathematician Christian Johann Doppler, who first explained the effect in 1842. The ambulance siren is not changing its volume. The sound waves are being compressed as it is approaching and stretched as the ambulance recedes. The spectroscope shows that light waves show the same Doppler effect as sound waves. They are compressed as the star or galaxy is approaching us and appear stretched when it is receding. Therefore, the light from an approaching galaxy will appear slightly bluer, the blue shift, a slight increase in frequency, and the light from a receding galaxy will appear slightly redder than normal, or red shift, a slight decrease in the light's frequency. In 1929, Edwin Hubble, after whom the Hubble spacecraft is named, published his spectroscopic study of 46 galaxies, the light from all but one of which was redshifted, moving away. Hubble's study provided the first evidence that the universe was expanding. The farther away a galaxy was from the Milky Way, the faster it was moving away. This was also the first evidence that the universe began with a Big Bang. The one galaxy whose light was blue-shifted, moving towards the Milky Way, was M31, the Andromeda galaxy, the closest galaxy. 250,000 miles per hour seems a pretty high speed at which to have a collision. That's the speed spectroscopic measurements of the blue shift of Andromeda indicate. It's going to be a big mess when it happens. But when is it going to happen? To determine when the two galaxies will collide, we need to determine the distance between them. And for that, we need, boom, supernovas. Type 1a supernovas are what are called standard candles. Just as we know how bright a candle shines, we know how bright a type 1a supernova shines, its absolute magnitude. A type 1a supernova appears when a white dwarf collapses under the pressure of all the gas it has been gravitationally slurping from a companion star. Looking at the Andromeda galaxy and measuring the apparent brightness of a supernova in the galaxy, it is possible to calculate its distance away from us. Because the intensity of light dims inversely with the square of its distance away, 
which is called the inverse square law, by comparing the apparent brightness of a supernova in the Andromeda galaxy with its absolute brightness, well, we get an approximate distance of 2.5 million light years. Since one light year is approximately 6 trillion miles, and the Andromeda galaxy is 2.5 million light years away, even though it is approaching at the speed of about 250,000 miles, we have about 4 billion years before the big collision. So you can wait until after lunch, maybe dinner, to start packing. As an aside, if we see the Andromeda galaxy as it was 2.5 million years ago, and it has been moving toward the Milky Way all this time, how big in the sky would it appear now? Quite as big as that tractor trailer in your rearview mirror. But do we really have 4 billion years before the galaxies crash? There are several other factors to consider. The minor galaxies that are gravitationally linked to both the Milky Way and the Andromeda galaxy will be swallowed up by their host galaxies. Considering the lopsided mass distribution that will result, the galactic collision of the Milky Way and Andromeda will be affected. Some scientists are saying it won't be a direct hit, but more of a sideswipe. And then there's the galactic halos of each galaxy. Here's what Project Amiga has found out about the halo of stars and gas surrounding the Andromeda galaxy. Using the Hubble Space Telescope, researchers were able to observe how the light from bright distant quasars were being absorbed by the mostly invisible gas around the Andromeda galaxy. Look at the results! Notice M31 in the center. If the same is true of the Milky Way, and there's no reason to think it would be different, then the halos of the two galaxies are touching now. The collision has already begun. There is also a question about what effect the dark matter clouds around each galaxy might have on an impending collision, or are having now. But enough of speculation. In 4 billion years, the Sun will have increased brightness on its way to becoming a red giant star. And humans will have already found another galaxy to inhabit. Happy traveling, dear humans! Oh, fasten your seatbelts! We're setting course for the most bizarre places in our universe, and you'll see the most mysterious phenomena few people have ever seen before. Recently, astronomers have discovered that the supermassive black hole at the center of our home Milky Way galaxy might be leaking. Why is it a significant change? Because it might mean that this black hole, called Sagittarius A-star, whose mass is 4.1 million times the mass of our Sun, isn't a sleeping giant as previously thought. It might still be active. And the leakage, recorded by scientists, may be the whole hiccuping while swallowing clouds of gas. Hey, I've been known to do that from time to time. During the research, the team of astronomers used the Hubble Space Telescope. It helped them spot a jet that looked like a blowtorch. It was pushing into clouds of hydrogen at the center of our galaxy. The jet seemed to spew gas like a hose directed into a pile of sand. This often occurs around other active black holes surrounded by the material drawn to them by their immense gravitational pull. Some of this material gets pulled into the black hole, but a small part of it gets swept outward by powerful magnetic fields. The research suggests that when a giant gas cloud gets too close to our supermassive black hole, it gets swallowed, and then the hole belches small jets of matter. Fermi bubbles might be the result of the belches that occurred around 2 to 4 million years ago. But recently, scientists have found another giant glowing bubble of hot gas. It aligned with the jet stretching for 35 light years or more from the supermassive black hole. Astronomers suspect that the jet could have plowed into this bubble of gas and inflated it. Now, let's visit some other breathtaking places in our universe. But be careful, some of them are extremely dangerous. Like this rotating neutron star called the Black Widow Pulsar. Just like its spider namesake, it's munching on its partner, a lightweight brown dwarf star. The more material this pulsar consumes, the more slowly it spins. The energy the neutron star is losing in the process causes the companion star to dwindle. If it does exist, Nuclear pasta is the strongest material in the entire universe. Formed from the leftovers of extinguished stars, this substance gets squeezed into spaghetti-like tangles of material. It can break, but only if you apply 10 billion times the pressure needed to shatter steel. How about visiting a planet where it rains glass? Nah, I'd rather not. You see, this bright blue exoplanet looks peaceful and slightly familiar. Don't you think it slightly resembles Earth? But this pretty appearance hides the planet's terrifying nature. 
the winds blow at 5,400 miles per hour on its surface. That's seven times the speed of sound. But that's not the worst. It rains glass sideways in this scorching hot alien world. Solar tsunamis are a solar phenomenon dubbed terminator events. These tsunamis take place at the sun's equator. Disastrous magnetic field collisions seem to cause ginormous twin tsunamis of plasma. These tsunamis tear across the star's surface, moving at a speed of 1,000 feet per second. They can last for weeks at a time and happen every decade or so. Now look at this space body. Its nickname is Electric Hyperion. This Saturn's moon is one of the most bizarre-looking moons in the solar system. But its appearance isn't the strangest thing about it. This pumice-stone-like rock, pockmarked with countless craters, is also charged with static electricity. And it's flowing out into space. Look at this, a rogue planet with auroras. Lost in space and drifting through galaxies, rogue planets were once flung away from their parent stars. But one of them, 200 light-years away from Earth, is different from the rest. It's a planet-sized object with a magnetic field 200 times stronger than that of Jupiter. This field is so powerful that it generates flashing auroras in the planet's atmosphere. Be sure to stay away from black holes. Do I really need to warn you? Yep, they're some of the most perilous objects in the universe. But how about mini black holes? Unlike their massive siblings, hypothetical mini black holes could be really tiny, not bigger than an atom. Even so, just one minuscule thing would have the mass of a thousand sedans. One theory claims that tons of micro black holes could have been created right after the Big Bang and the beginning of the universe. Some scientists even go as far as to say that a couple of mini black holes pass through our planet every day. Ooh, I'll bet you like our next stop, a burning ice planet. Far away Neptune-sized exoplanet Gliese 436b is a paradox. It's made of scorching hot ice. The planet completes one full orbit around the red dwarf Gliese 436 in just two days. It means it's traveling remarkably close to its parent star. That might be the reason the planet's temperatures rarely drop below 800 degrees Fahrenheit. But the strangest thing? The planet hosts huge volumes of water ice known as Ice X, which remains solid despite blistering temperatures. Now, if you love jewelry, this next world is for you. A diamond planet. About 4,000 light years away from Earth, there's a planet that seems to be one enormous diamond. The planet is denser than any other discovered so far and consists mostly of carbon. It's so dense that astronomers think this carbon might be crystalline. This in turn might mean that at least some part of the planet is diamond. Moons orbiting other moons might exist, or they might not. Astronomers haven't agreed on this one yet. Planets orbit stars, and moons orbit planets. But then, why can't there be moon moons, also known as submoons, moonettes, and moons? It actually sounds like one of those flowery Hawaiian dresses, you know, moo moos. But alas, no. Researchers claim that moon moons could exist, but the host moon has to be massive enough, the moon moon small enough, and there must be a wide gulf between these moons and the host planet. Now, I'll take you to the living fossil galaxy. DG Sat 1 is as big as the Milky Way, but it's nearly invisible because its stars are spread out incredibly thinly. But what makes the galaxy unique is that it's sitting all alone, unlike other galaxies of this kind. Those are usually found in clusters. It can mean that DG Sat 1 was formed in a different era, probably a mere 1 billion years after the Big Bang. If it's true, this galaxy is a real living fossil. Now, you won't be able to see the next space phenomenon, all because people can't see infrared light. And the phenomenon I'm talking about is an infrared stream from space. Ooh. Neutron stars are ultra-dense collapsed cores of giant stars. They usually emit X-rays or radio waves. But in 2018, astronomers discovered a weird stream of infrared light. It seemed to be coming from a neutron star 800 light-years away from our planet. This signal was probably generated by a disk of dust surrounding the star. But this theory hasn't been proven yet. Behind the orbit of Neptune lies the mysterious Kuiper Belt, filled with massive icy objects. The most curious thing about this space formation, though, is that scientists fail to explain the pattern of its movement. The only explanation they have is that Neptune might be hiding from our sight a ginormous planet. 
This hypothetical planet has already got the name Planet 9, and all we have to do is wait until its existence is confirmed. Or not. Let's visit our star. But we need to be careful not to come too close, because the Sun's atmosphere is hotter than the surface of the star. While on the surface, the temperature reaches 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, the upper atmosphere heats up to millions of degrees. Scientists suspect that explosive bursts of heat from the Sun may have something to do with this unique phenomenon. Now, this space object is also worth visiting. Haumea, a dwarf planet orbiting in the Kuiper Belt, has a bizarre elongated shape and two moons. The day on this planet lasts four hours, making it the fastest spinning big object in our solar system. But the most mysterious thing about Haumea is that the planet has a thin 40-mile-wide ring circling it. Ring-a-ding-ding! The Milky Way is one of the biggest mysteries out there, literally. It's hard to figure out how big our home galaxy is. And one of the main reasons is because we live in it. Think of it as walking around a mall. You can tell it's big, but you can't be certain until you actually see it from a bird's eye view. The Milky Way consists of billions of distant stars that look like a string of lights from afar. So you just need to measure the distance between these stars and voila, you have the answer. Eh, Not really. I might have forgotten to mention opaque clouds of dust blocking your view. Some scientists were stubborn enough to run computer models of how galaxies form and evolve. There's a halo around our galaxy, so the scientists wanted to see if there was some sort of a dead end in the Milky Way. They found out that the Milky Way spreads for 100,000 light-years away from its center. It likely means that the entire galaxy is around 200,000 light-years across. The problem with this estimation is that halos don't tend to have some final border since they simply fade away. It's like pointing a flashlight and trying to see precisely where the light ends. In 2013, the Hubble Space Telescope captured an image of something 25 million light-years away. It turned out to be a spiral galaxy, later called ESO 3738, with at least seven other galactic neighbors. And this galaxy is as thin as a pancake. A very shiny pancake. The telescope also took a photo of another galaxy cluster 65 million light-years away. It was called IC 335. It's another glorious glittering pancake floating in the vastness of space. The images the telescope took aren't the most accurate. It's hard to tell what exactly you're looking at. These disk galaxies have lots of dust clouds that can stretch for hundreds of light years across. They're mainly located near the centers of galaxies and are invisible in regular light. But they can be detected with the help of a blue filter. Anyway, this IC 335 galaxy is an oval disk with huge clouds of gas and dust. This means stars constantly appear there. But not all galaxies create stars. A galaxy is born as a giant ball of slowly rotating gas that is steadily collapsing in on itself. As it starts spinning faster and faster, the pancake shape is formed. Ooh, pass me the syrup. It's like spinning pizza dough in the air after rolling it into a ball. The topping is stars, and the sauce is clouds of dust and gas. Are you getting hungry like me? Some galaxies can lose their gas and dust if they become part of a galaxy cluster. Then all these mini-galaxies orbit their common center of mass, with gas separating them. When a disk galaxy dashes through them like a speeding train, the pressure can blow away this dust and gas. From far away, it looks like you're staring at a DVD you're about to play. But if you traveled millions of light years to get a closer look, you'd see a dim disk filled with stars. You wouldn't even be able to tell you're inside it. You'd also see a bright blob of dust left by the red giants in the middle of the galaxy. Red giants are massive and very bright stars with low surface temperatures. But the images of these galaxies don't actually show us their real color. Cameras make up some of these hues so that you don't have to look at something fuzzy or grainy. People don't actually know the real colors of distant galaxies. Our galaxy has a lot of gas inside, like me. So we don't need to expect our home to dry up anytime soon. In fact, the Milky Way still produces new stars, around 7 a year. But some galaxies fade out when they can no longer create stars. In the industry, they call it strangulation, and it happens when galaxies run out of gas. Which means there's no more new material that can be used for star making. Gas and dust aren't the only things you can find in a galaxy. Just like a magician pulling a rabbit, flowers, or other things out of their magic hat, galaxies have other surprises like planets. 
those balls of matter spinning around themselves and around other things. Well, technically, planets are far from being perfectly round in shape. But they aren't also flat like spiral galaxies. It's mostly because of gravity. Its force is so strong that a planet pulls everything towards its center, taking the shape of a sphere. In the process, all the edges and anything else that might stick out get smoothed out. But the smaller a space body is, the less round it is. Take a comet. It doesn't always have a smooth surface. It's small, and therefore, its edges are rugged and pointy. Given the size of Earth, it's safe to say the gravity is strong here compared to that of the Moon or any smaller size space object. And because of our planet's constant rotation, there's an outward bulge on Earth. This tug of war between the gravity pulling inward and the planet's spin doesn't allow Earth to be a perfect ball. On top of Earth not being a perfect sphere, the planet is also tilted. This design flaw is responsible for the seasons we have. This tilt could happen because millions of years after Earth was formed, it probably collided with a protoplanet, a large space body developing into a planet. Venus is unique because it rotates backward compared to the rest of its peers. If you were standing on Venus, the hottest planet in our solar system, you'd see the sun rise in the west and set in the east. But you'd have to make it on time to observe this phenomenon. A day on Venus lasts for more than 240 Earth days. For a long time, scientists believed that the sun's strong pull on Venus was responsible for such a long day. But new theory claims that Venus used to spin just like Earth and the rest of the planets. But at one point, it just flipped its axis 180 degrees. It doesn't mean the planet abruptly stopped halfway through the rotation and started to move backward. When theory suggests that a large comet or object struck the planet in the past, this might have caused it to change the direction of its rotation. But many scientists doubt this theory. If you observe the moon for some time, you may notice that it's the same face staring at you every night. The truth is that the moon does rotate, but very slowly. It takes our planet's natural satellite 27 Earth days to rotate around its axis. Plus, the moon rotates at the same rate that it orbits Earth. The side we always see is called the near side of the moon. And the side that's not facing us is, you guessed it, the far side of the moon. It also has the nickname the dark side of the moon. Uranus's rotation axis is 98 degrees relative to the plane of the solar system, which basically means that the planet spins on its side. For a while, scientists believed that a large object firing through space knocked into Uranus, causing it to tilt. But here's one problem. Uranus's moons are covered in ice. A collision so powerful that it made the planet tilt would have resulted in disrupting the moon's movement and their position. But they seem relatively untouched, and all the ice covering them is still intact. But any major changes happening with Uranus would have generated enough energy to melt the ice. Another reason for Uranus's strange position might be its rings. Yup, Uranus has rings just like Saturn, except they're lighter and fainter. Saturn's rings are mostly billions of chunks of ice and rock floating in orbit. Some particles can be the size of a pebble, while others can reach the size of a house. Wow! Other particles are broken up comets, asteroids, and moons torn apart by Saturn's gravity. If you observe the rings from afar, they look like colorful stripes made up of thousands of different streaks. But there are actually only eight layers of rings. Uranus might have had rings that were just as glorious as Saturn's around 4.5 billion years ago. The balance between Saturn's gravity and its rings might be responsible for keeping the planet upright so that it doesn't tilt over. If Uranus had the same rings, they could prevent the planet from toppling over. The way to solve Uranus's tilting problem might be for the planet to get its rings back. They would help Uranus keep its balance. On the other hand, hey, we like it just the way it is. It seems you've been lost in the dark, cold vastness of space for ages. You don't remember what green trees look like. You can recall what fresh morning air smells like. You're about to run out of what little fuel you still have. And then, you see it! A planet! Can it be Earth? Your battered spaceship is moving closer to the planet, and a giant wave of bitter disappointment almost drowns you. This alien world looks nothing like your beautiful blue planet. You get down to work. After thorough research, you realize that the planet in front of your eyes can't be anything else but Kepler-22b, which, in turn, means that you're 635 light-years away from home and are unlikely to ever return to Earth.
You need some time to get used to this horrible revelation. When you come back to your senses, you understand that you have to do everything in your power to survive. Even if it means living in an unfamiliar, probably hostile world. The only good news in that ocean of desperation is that Kepler-22b is located in the habitable zone of its star, and it means there might be liquid water on its surface. And where there's water, there's also the possibility of life. Your life. Earth's astronomers discovered this exoplanet, which is what all the planets outside the solar system are called, using the transit method. The problem with many exoplanets is that it's hard to spot them since the bright glare of their stars keeps them hidden from our telescopes. But the transit method means that instead of looking for planets, scientists watch the star, Kepler-22. They notice that over time, its brightness changed. That was because Kepler-22b regularly blocked the star's light. This discovery also helped researchers figure out the size of the planet and the way it orbited its star. It turned out that the planet was 36 times more massive than our planet. If you decide to settle down in this world, this information will probably make you feel even lonelier. Your new home is also 15% nearer to its star than our planet is to the sun. If Earth moved over so close to our star, everything and everyone on the planet would become fried in no time. Consider yourself lucky that the star that is now illuminating your spaceship, lying sideways on the surface of the planet, is smaller and colder than the sun. It means you'll get as much sunlight as you would if you were on Earth. The temperature on your new home planet is quite comfortable, around 60 to 72 degrees F. But don't get your hopes up. You don't know for sure yet, but there's a theory that the planet is rotating on its side, like Uranus in our solar system. What can it mean for you? Unfortunately, nothing good. Even though the position of the planet probably seems insignificant, the complications might be fatal. The problem is that in this case, the north and south poles of Kepler-22b would be either plunged into darkness or illuminated by super bright sunlight for half a year. Now, that wouldn't be a matter of being a daytime or nighttime person. It would mean that temperatures on the planet would change from freezing to boiling all the time, which wouldn't be great for your survival. Anyway, you haven't had enough time to figure out whether this prediction is true. What you have noticed, though, is that your new home is covered with an ocean. You almost dropped into it before resuming control over your spacecraft and landing it on the shore instead. According to your calculations, the ocean might be around 160 feet deep. It might also act as natural climate control, keeping the wild temperatures at bay by storing heat in the summer and releasing it during the winter. But even if it's true, your main concern is food and oxygen. You're running out of your scarce resources at an alarming speed. What are you going to eat on this lifeless planet? How will you get some air to breathe? Your future looks darker and darker with every passing minute. Will the sheer strength of your willpower help you survive? Time will tell. You shouldn't have made that bet with your friends. Now, your spaceship is hovering just over the atmosphere of Jupiter, a gas giant and the largest planet in our solar system. You're staring at the ginormous pale yellow sphere in front of your eyes, dreading your task, which is to fly through the planet and leave on the other side. Doubts are plaguing your mind. Is it even possible? Well, you're about to find out. Jupiter is truly massive. If the planet was 80 times as massive as it is now, it would have a chance to turn into a tiny red dwarf star. But even though its size isn't enough for such a transformation, Jupiter is still huge, more than 89,000 miles wide at the equator. The planet is so large it could fit inside 1,300 Earths. It's also impressively hot, about 43,000 F at the core. If you decided to parachute into Jupiter, you would never land on a firm surface because the planet mostly consists of gas. Around 90% of the planet's atmosphere is hydrogen. The remaining 10% is made up of helium with tiny traces of other gases. The planet is also surrounded by a layer of thick brown, yellow, red, and white clouds. They make Jupiter look colorful and beautifully striped. There's no solid ground on the planet. That's why astronomers define the planet's surface as the point where the atmospheric pressure equals that on Earth. You wouldn't be able to stand on that surface, though. It's just another layer of gases. 
but the gravitational pull there is around two and a half times more powerful than on our planet. The deeper you dive, the more difficult it gets to move. Under immense atmospheric pressure, hydrogen and helium gases turn into a dense fluid. Closer to the core, this liquid becomes a mixture of metallic hydrogen and helium.